Is anyone grateful for the presence of God this morning? Come on. Can we sing that chorus one more time? Come on, why don't you raise your hands this morning? Why don't we sing this out? The name above every other name. Come on. The name above sickness. The name above lack. Come on. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stay again. Amen. 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 Well, listen, in that same atmosphere of faith and worship, we are going to pray together as a church. I don't know how you came into church this morning, whether you came in a little weary, a little exhausted, maybe carrying a few problems through the week. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, God has not left you or abandoned you. He have on the screen different prayer requests these are things that people have filled out in our church that are believing for us to pray together and so Courtney has some of those there that we're going to share for us to pray in this moment um, so somebody here is at, uh, praying for a new job we're gonna be praying for you somebody else is praying for a mother who's grieving her son um, and then somebody else is praying for relief or stress from moving which I will be believing. For Moving you. is stressful. It's I don't know if you know that. It is one of the, I think it's the top five, one of the most stressful things is it moving. Is. It is. It's be Especially crazy. in LA. If you are moving in LA and you're in an apartment complex, that is, that it's a is commitment. tricky. Yeah, yeah. But listen, <laughs> wherever you are, and if you've got something you're believing God yeah. for in this moment, why don't you join us as a community as we. Unite our faith together in this moment. If you, if that's you and you feel comfortable, would you raise your hand in this moment? You go, I got something. I, I want to pray. Yeah. I want something I believe in God for in this moment. Come on, Courtney, would you pray for us? God, I thank you that today not Come only on. are you holy and sovereign and seated in heaven, but you're close you, and Jesus. you care and you are moved with compassion. Yes, Jesus. And so, God, we just lift up these needs to you today. I pray for every person with a hand raised that has a need that they would be honest enough to say, God, I need you in this situation. I pray that you would move in power, Lord God. We pray for new jobs, God. I pray for this mother who's grieving her son. I pray the comfort. Um, of the Holy Spirit yes, into that situation. I pray your presence would be near to her, God. I pray for this move. Lord, I pray that it would be an easy day. I pray that you would bring friends around, that it would be a great day, and that you would bless this new home, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, can we give God some praise this morning? Well, welcome to church, everyone. It's great to have you here. And... Uh, could you just, if you, again, if you feel, oh, ooh, 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 Jesus, come Lord. on. Holy Spirit, we know what you want to do here. Um, if you are uh, visiting us for the first or second time, would you just give us a wave? Come on, can we welcome everybody that is here? Welcome to church, everyone. There's a whole group down here. It's great to have you guys joining us, awesome. and uh, it's always special when you are here. So thanks for being here with us, but... We've got people praising God for yes, a few things as well. Yes, Court. somebody here is praising God for a healthy pregnancy. That's yeah. good. It's amazing. Somebody else is thanking God for a promotion and wait for it, two raises. Two raises. I'll take that. Raise and then they got another raise. Was that part of the negotiation? Because is it like a technicality? Yeah, if, you're, that if you're here, if you could maybe just tell us after. They offered you and then you countered and you're like, that's two, you know? that Double raise. Talk about counting your blessings. That's great. Somebody else is thanking God for youth leaders, which I agree with. It's great to awesome have youth to up the youth front here. again. It's awesome. And then we have one from this weekend. We had baptisms yesterday. Yes, we did. Yeah. Beach baptisms. It was awesome. I'm thankful because uh, Aiden King moved to L.A. That's good. 
That's a good move. But hey, anyways, it's great to have you. Why don't you turn around to someone, say hi to them, if, greet them, give them a high five if you're okay with that. You can take a seat. Well, hello as well to everyone that is watching online. It is good to have you joining us for church this morning, whether you are in California or beyond. It is good to have you joining us today. It's good to see Dan Matsumoto, Riley. Hey, guys. It's so good to see you. Oh, man. Hey, well, listen, I've got, I've got two things to let you know about. Uh, number one is we actually, not sure if you know about this, but we actually have a parent's room for anyone that has a, a small child, a baby. Uh, if you look behind, it's behind you to your left. There is a parent's room for you uh, if that pertains to you. Basically, we just want to make sure that, you know, sometimes with bringing your kid to church, it's sometimes hard uh, to sometimes be able to sit in. And we understand that uh, sometimes you got to come in and out a little bit. And so we want to make that easy for you so that you can enjoy church as well. So we have an amazing parents room for you. And if you have kids that are uh, from the ages of, remind me, the kids ministry age group again. One to ten. Thank you, Bobby and Anna, incredible people. And uh, one to 10, we have an incredible kids program as well. And so that is happening during service. If you don't know about that, we'd love to let you know more. It's on the way back, on your way out, on the left-hand side. We'd love to, to be able to help you with that. But uh, the last thing I want to let you know about, and I know we talked about this last week as well, but if you are new, we actually have something really excited coming up in Los Angeles, and it's called One Day LA. One Day LA. And so One Day LA is an event that is happening. Basically, it's an opportunity for not just our church, but the church across Los Angeles to serve the city of Los Angeles. And, uh, and we're actually really excited about it. And so it's, uh, we're partnering with different churches all around the greater LA area. And uh, basically, we're going to be serving it, loving it, making sure that we are helping any way that we can. There's so many different areas of service, uh, which I think even ends with, um, I, I know a few weeks ago there was a, a, uh, a, at the SoFi, it's at SoFi, the new stadium. Do you want to just get up here and just tell us about it? Because JP Brumfield has been heading this up alongside with so many others and it's part of our team, our city care team, but is also part of the One Day LA team as well. So he'll be able to... Hey guys. Hey man. How are you guys doing? You doing good? Awesome. Hey, so I, yes. So I can't wait to, to see the Rams beat the Saints at oh. SoFi, but you know... Oh, I like the tie-in. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, so just, that's, that's, that's what we're here for. That's awesome. It probably never happened, but you know, we can always dream, can't we? Yeah, listen, I'm like Rams every game except for that one game. <laughs> okay. Just like you're Phoenix. Okay, cool. All right. Suns in four. Let's go. Yes. Awesome, guys. So as Pastor Sam said, we are partnering with local churches, local governments, local nonprofits to better reach the community of Los Angeles. It'll be the whole week, but our church will be focusing on Saturday the 24th. So it is so important that you go to register at, uh, you can text Welcome Home LA to 97,000. And this is your best and quickest way to get involved with what we are doing. Uh, you will get a shirt and you will get a ticket to the SoFi event, which is going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. There's going to be some pretty cool things happening there. But we are, we are actually going to be partnering with a local school to be able to bring aid in, 
into the community and we're going to clean it up and have fun with the local community within that area so yeah and it, yeah it's just really amazing yeah and the great thing about it as well jp is that um if you obviously you can go you could you could sign up through the normal one day la website uh, but we would encourage our church to do that for two reasons one uh it would allow us to all serve together and uh, what the amazing thing about it is our campus in because uh, in orange county is going to be coming up and we're going to be serving together uh, but it allows us for us as a church to make sure that we're all serving together on the day that we're not broken up in different teams but two it makes it cheaper for everybody as well right correct yes there is a ten dollar registration fee along with it which which helps get the shirt and the SoFi event. And then if we all register together, then we will have floor seating for that event as well together. So we wanna make sure that we do that. Yeah, just just walk around and you just say, I know JP and it's that's it. That's all you need, that's all you need. But I uh, thank you. But yeah, that's coming up, which is gonna be awesome, July 24th. And, uh, and if you are watching online and you'd love to be a part, like we said, you can text Welcome Home LA to 97,000. But listen, we are going to take some time and share uh, in our giving, give everyone the opportunity to give in this moment. And so uh, there's different ways that you can give up, up on the screen and uh, you can uh, give through uh, push pay, uh, but you can also, uh, you'll have it right there. You could do Welcome Home LA as well and, uh, and to 97,000, that's also the option for you to be able to give. But I want to share on a very, I guess, known uh, Old Testament scripture that is used around giving often, and uh, it is in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And, uh, and it says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house, and therefore put me to test, and see if I don't open up the windows of heaven for you, and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I was having a conversation with a friend earlier, we were just joking around about Obviously how, you know, now you have the spread of information just so easily and so quickly, but we were laughing about how it's funny how things used to spread without social media, you know? So like, it's funny how uh, there are just certain phrases that everybody knows, you know, or, or even just like really weird things from the playground people know about. Like, how does everyone know about that little three stick S, you know what I mean? Like everyone knows what I'm talking about with that. But who taught us that? Like, where did that come from? Because we all know how to do it. Um, or like just either random things like, um, like if I said Marco, you would say, you know, if, uh, if I said God is good, you would say all the time. Oh, we got to do this one again. Okay. Because I, I, I feel like we didn't really put some umph into it. If I said God is good, you would say, and all the time. How do we know that? Like everybody does that. Like where do we all just like sit together and we're like, we're going to learn this in all these churches around America and really nail this thing down. But the thing is, is that what we learn is, is that when the call goes out, we know what the response is, is basically what we're doing. When you hear Marco, you say, if I said knock, knock, you say, again, it's like the call goes out, you know how to respond. That's what giving is. Giving isn't us just giving because we thought it was a good idea. Giving is a response to the goodness of God in our lives. A giving is that call that we understand. The Bible says that we love God because he first loved. So the call went out and we respond. We respond. And this is important for two reasons. It reminds us our position in this. So it Sometimes when we think we're the ones initiating, it leaves room for pride because I gave it. I gave it. Oh, I gave this much, or I want to do this, or I thought this was good, or I'm being generous, or don't you know what I've done? But when you understand you're giving in response to the goodness of God, you actually realize how much it fails in comparison to how much he gave for us. But two, it also sets us up for what he wants to do as well. So if I said, knock, knock, now, whose job is it to deliver the line? It's mine. He says, bring the tithe, test me, and see if I don't pour out a blessing. So he gives, we give, and see if I don't back to you. So with that, 
why don't we grab what we're going to give today? Let's give with faith today. Believing that if whatever you're going through, whatever the circumstance is, by putting God first, don't be surprised what God does in your life. This isn't a, a coin slot thing. This is simply the principles of living a life based on the principles of God. So come on, why don't we grab what we're going to give and let's pray. God, thank you so much. online for everyone here in person and God we just pray that as we give what is yours as we bring our tithes as we give you our offerings God we just pray and we test you in this we pray that you would do far more in your hands than it could ever go on our own we thank you for it in Jesus name amen 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 well it is great to have you here once again and uh, like I said today is uh I mean, it's just an awesome day to have you here, and uh, I'm excited next week. Um, you know, we, I, I thought worship was incredible today, by the way. I thought it was phenomenal. But I'm excited next week. Um, Brooke Lidgerwood's going to be here leading worship as well, which is going to be good. We're going to take communion next week as well, and that's going to just be an awesome Sunday. We'd love to encourage you to come back next week, but are you ready for the word this morning? Come on, why don't you stand to your feet? I'm not sure if you know this. I know there are a lot of people that are new to Hillsong Church, but Hillsong Church is so much bigger than what you see in this room. And uh, we are a part of a global church, and that includes a global family. And, uh, and so I'm excited. We have uh, Pastor Gary Clark and Kathy Clark as well with us this morning. They, they could tell you for how long specifically, but you know, for many, many years had been the lead pastors of Hillsong in London, have recently transitioned to take on a global role within our church. And, uh, and he, since Courtney and I have stepped in, uh, this man has called me, has been there for me uh, through and through. And I love the way he communicates. I love the way he thinks. It is an honor to have him here today online and here in person. Can we put our hands together? Can we honor Pastor Gary Clark as he brings the word this morning? Good morning. Hello, hello. Good morning. You're good? I feel like everyone in the world at the moment just needs to go. So just, just take a big deep breath and just let it out. Oh, you don't have to if you don't want to. But um, anyway, it's good to be here. That's all I was trying to say. And um, good to just spend some time hanging with... Um, with the Lopez's and, uh, and the team here. So, um, and I love LA. Our son lived here for three years. Three years, he lived, uh, did university, college, as you call it. We call it university and worked here. So, anyway, you're also, like looking at me like, um, <laughs> like um, this, this is the weaker part of, um, of what I do. This sort of, you know, this sort of, hi, how are you? Good to be here, all of that. Uh, so anyway, come on, let's pray, yeah? Father, we just, we just love you and um, we just commit this time to you and we pray that you use your word. I pray that you do what only you can do, Lord. You can take your word and you can, you can actually bring it into the context of our own personal lives. And Lord, I pray that you do that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Fantastic. Grab a, grab a seat. This is um, my, my disclaimer. I always like to give a disclaimer. My disclaimer for today is um, this is the second time that I've spoken in public in 16 months. So we've been in London, in the UK, we've been either locked in our houses or severely, what we would consider, we would consider severely socially restricted for was, um, well, we're there for 16 months. We've been out for a month now, so 17 months. And uh, so I know in LA, everyone's just starting to emerge out of this, this what you could probably, I would we'd all agree on saying a very difficult, very strange, very been that we're dealing with a pandemic but there's just been lots of stuff going on and uh, and we're all emerging from it and so this is this is um, 
Actually, it's, it sort of feels weird. Can I say this? No. Normally, you're just looking at a camera hoping someone is there. And to actually see people looking back at you and thinking, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Because you're just not used to looking at faces staring at you. But anyway, I'll get, I'll get used to it. All right. So let me, let me start. All right. So um, the, Colossians chapter 1, verse, verse 15. Um, the New Living Translation says this. It says that, that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. Um, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 3 said he is the very essence or the very nature, the character of God, the very image of God. Now, now why am I saying that? Because... As I ask you a question, you know, what's your perspective of God? How do you see God? Where, where do you go for your reference point on God? What do I look to? Where do I find, where do I find out what he's, what he's about? Where do I find out what he's like? Where do I find out what he's got to say? Where do I find out how he would behave? Where do I find out how he would treat other people? How do I find out how he would treat me? How would he interact me with me? How would he behave if he was here amongst us? God I'm talking to. How do we work that out? What's he actually like? Jesus. That's where we find it. Jesus. You just look, you just look at Jesus, look at the person of, of Jesus, and that's where we get to find, just, just find out just what God is like. How would he interact with us? Um, in that same passage of Scripture, this Jesus, in, um, if I read from the Message Bible, it says, verses 15 to 17, he says this. He says, we look at this son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see, see God's original intended purpose in everything created. For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible, invisible, rank after rank of angels, everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. Him meaning Jesus. He was, he was there before it all came into existence. And he holds it all together right up to this moment. I just want to focus. He holds it all together right up to this moment. All right, then it goes on and it says... And when it comes to the church, right, so this visible image, the invisible God, Jesus, who's the head of the church, and when it comes to the church, he organizes and he holds it together like a head does a body. Now, I read that passage of scripture there on top of, okay, if I want to understand God and I want to get to know his thoughts, his views, his behaviors, and all of those things, because you've got to remember we're emerging out of a a time where everybody, it seems like, I don't know what it's been like here in the US, but in the UK, it's like everybody's questioning everything. Yeah. Everyone's questioning everything. Everyone's got a different reference point on something. Everyone's got a different perspective. Everyone's got a, a different worldview. It's like, how, how did I get locked in my house and come up with a whole new worldview? Yeah. Uh, it's like, that's, that is the world. Yeah. And then inside all of that, there's been so much heartache. There's been so much drama in, pe pe in individual people's lives. Life has been extremely difficult for a lot of people, whether it be when it comes to the people's physical well-being and loss, when it comes to people's jobs, and, and it's just been really hard. Right. Uh, and it says here that he was there in the beginning before it was all created. He holds everything together, including the church. He holds together like a head does a body. And I look at that and I think, you know what? If he can hold the whole world together and he can hold the church together, he can hold me together. He can hold me together. And, and probably like you, we've all had, a, over this season, we've all had a good, maybe a good excuse or a good reason, valid or sometimes invalid, to actually feel like you're just losing it, falling apart. But you know what? Jesus can hold us all together. He's the one, if he can hold the whole world together, he can hold our church together. And he can hold you together, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. when we look, so the, I guess first, first up, and uh, if, you're, if you're looking for points, 
Um, I don't really have many. <laughs> if you're looking for a title to my message, if you're taking notes, sorry guys, I'm, I'll invent that by the time I get to the end. All right? <laughs> Let me just start with this is just this is what I feel like just the impression on my heart just to 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 talk about. Right now. So, so this, this Jesus, here's, um, here's, here's the most amazing thing. You know, if you, you put your faith in him, um, and I guess firstly, faith, there's probably a myriad of um, different definitions that people love to throw out and say, this is what we mean by faith and all those sorts of things. And um, here, here's just a, a statement I picked up and I thought was a, was a good one. Faith is the deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not fully understand at the time. The deliberate confidence, this God that can hold us all together, this God that can hold the world together, this God that can hold our church together, can hold your family together. This is, we put faith in him, and it's, the, it's a deliberate thing to put our confidence in his, his very character. And it's interesting how we'll say, and that we don't actually understand his ways at the time. I, I don't know about you, but often, often, if we call it God's victories in our life, and God's, God's oh, I, see, I see God in my life is like this. You know, I, I can see God back there. Sometimes it's very difficult to see God right here, and it seems almost impossible to see him out there, but faith says, you know what, he's out there. And, um, and you know what? I have a confidence that it's going to be better out there in where I'm looking than maybe how I'm currently sensing right now. And if I do boldly look back, I can see God through the journey of my life. And I'm going to put my faith in that. Now, when we put our faith in Jesus, it, the result is we enter into a personal relationship with him. It's not a, it's not a belief system. It's not a philosophy to follow. It's a personal... Now, I know I'm teaching ducks to quack, but I'm going somewhere here, all right? But uh, we enter into a, just a, a personal relationship with him that has, a, has an impact on us. And the impact of us, it, on us is it's a transformational impact. He's the, he's the, he, he works on us in, internally. And I think the thing that we've all got to understand, I'll promise you now there's not a person in the room that's going through the same thing you're going through. There's probably not a person in the room that is... Go, where is up to the same place or whatever's going on in your life in his transformational behavior. He, it's, it's very unique. It's very personal. He, what he's doing in the person's life over here will be very different to what he's doing in a person's life over here. The order of when he should do it, he doesn't have an order. I'm going to do this first and we all get this sorted out. I'm going to do this and I'm going to get this sorted out. I'm going to do this and we're going to... There's not an order. It is he works in our lives. And it's a transformational thing that if you sit there and think, well, transformation or what? You know, that I sort of look at it like this. That little bit, that not such a little bit, but that thing inside of me, it just go, you know, when it's all said and done, it just doesn't feel right, does it? There's got to be something else. There's got to, I, I can be. There. And that's, that's what he's working on. And the most amazing thing is, there is this promise of completion that's coming our way. There's a, there's a completion promise that we find in the Bible, in the gospel. And so, all I'm trying to do is just build a case for Jesus in your life, right? Now, so, let's pick, pick something up here. The, Matthew chapter 9. I think this is the... If, if we're looking for scriptures on, um, on screen, is it on screen? There it is. I think the, the team said, if you've got any scriptures for your message, I said, I've got about 15 or 20. I'm just not sure which ones I'm going to use yet. But I will use this one, I promise you, right? So, so, um, so you, get, you get one on the screen. So bear with me, all you guys on, online. Now, so, so this is Matthew. Speaking, right? Now, let's. Now, I want you to try and capture something here. This is Matthew speaking about his encounter with Jesus. So, almost like the book of Matthew, I know there's a higher purpose to the writing of it, but if you read it from the perspective of Matthew's almost writing out 
my experience and what I understood, what I heard relative to the person of Jesus. That's his, and this is, this is his, his encounter, because it says here in verse 9, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Now I think that's random. Hey, come follow me. Oh, okay. No, no. So there's obviously a lot of background that we don't get, get in this. Obviously, Matthew must have had some form of, I've heard about this guy. I've, I've heard about what's going on and all of that. So it kind of just, I just don't think it was as random. Otherwise, it's highly random, right? But so he's obviously in this place where it's like, okay, this, this is, and so he goes on and he says, so then Matthew says about himself, later Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collector and other disreputable sinners, right? But when Jesus saw this, I, I like that term, other disreputable sinners, because most of us wouldn't classify ourselves in that, that, that bracket. But, um, uh, but when Jesus and the Pharisees saw, when the, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he says, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Then he added, go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners. Those that know they are sinners. In other words, people who have got a humility about them that are prepared to say, you know what? I need God. I need to change my perspective on God. I need God. They, they, they just know I need, need God. Now, there's a few interesting things that, that play, out, um, play out in this. I, I said at the start, how do you see God? Right? How, do you, how do you actually see him? Um, because it's a very important question to, that you should ask yourself. How, how do you see him? Right? Because how you, dis- how you see him determines a lot in your life. It, and it, in fact, it determines so much in your life, it will impact the way you live your life. It will impact the way you, you integrate with or interact with, with other, other people. Do, and so it's important to, to, I believe, to get a really good, healthy perspective of how I see God. Where's the best place to get a picture of God? Jesus. Right? Because if, 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 for example, if you, if you believe God is, is, is um, harsh and punishing, guess what you end up? Harsh and punishing. If you believe that God is loving and gracious and kind and caring, guess what you end up? Loving and gracious kind and caring. And you know what? As we emerge out of lockdown, out of COVID, there's a world outside the window, right, that just needs to hear and see a God that is loving, kind, gracious, caring. That's what the world is looking for. That's what the world is looking for. Right? And so how, how, we, how we see him as I, as I said, is, is really important. So the, 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 another question I ask you, ask you here, because he, the, the Pharisees were, were, were questioning who he's hanging, hanging with. Why is he with these sinners? Um, putting, putting a question mark. What, what Jesus' response was, he says, you know, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. You know, how do you see sin? It's another question. Right? Now, this is not meant to be a Bible college lecture, so I'm not going to do that, right? But um, it, do you see sin as a crime that needs punishing? Or do you see sin as a condition that needs healing and restoration? Because that, once again, d- d- and, and this is what, and I, I wonder whether this is the tension that Jesus is pulling out. But people who are prepared to say, oh, I'm just not sure everything's okay here. Don't think the world is okay. Don't think I'm okay. And I need, I need that God to do something in my life. I wonder whether he's bringing, bringing that out, out to them. 
Right, now, what's interesting here is, um, which is, I guess, where I want to get, where I want to get into what my message essentially is about, or the challenge within it. He, he makes this statement where he, um, he says, for I've come to call, not those, I've come to call. Now, I don't know about you, but when you hear, when you hear that, that statement, I've, I've come to call, we just go, oh, yeah, read over that. Where's it go? But that call, um, uh, forgive me, I can't tell you the, the author or the study, where I was in the study, but um, that, that word call is an interesting word in, in its original, in original context because apparently what it meant was he, the word call would, was a word that you would use as if you were assembling a group of people as a fighting force. So he's saying, so you could read it and Jesus saying, hey, I am, I am pulling together a people because we've got something to fight for. That's that, that's that word, that's that word call. And, and so that, that, so, and he says this in the context of Matthew, and I, I use the term at Matthew's dinner party. I met Jesus. So later in the evening, I invited Jesus, the guy who said, come follow me. And I invited all the others who he'd already said it to. Now, I don't know the order of when people were called, but they're all in the house. And there is a whole lot of, I brought my friends along. Now, good old Matthew was not one of the most favored people in town because he was a tax collector. And he's got all of his friends. He's got Jesus and the Jesus people. And he's brought them all into a room. And as usual, the religious turned up. And the Pharisees were there, right? So you've got, there's a dynamic playing out here. And he says to the people who are questioning, I've come to call this lot and pull them together and turn them into something. Because I'm it, almost as if, hey, and as we know, if you've been around Christianity for a while, that Jesus, Jesus has got a purpose. He, he's on a mission. And the redemption of humanity, the healing of humanity, and whatever words we want to put into that, that was, that was what, that's why God took on human form, to reveal himself to humanity and say, come on. And then he did something so that, hey, we can step into something better when we put our, our faith in him. You, you tracking with me, yeah. right? Right. So now, if you if you, you look at this, right? So Matthew chapter sixteen, verse verse sixteen or verse eighteen, familiar passage of scripture for for the people who have been in church a little while. Jesus speaking to Peter, right? And um, he says to says to Peter, "Who do men say I am?" And goes through and, P, and Peter's response goes through a number of Number of replies. In other words, this is what people are saying about you. This is who people are referring to you as. Then Jesus says to Peter, but who do you say I am? Once again, probably one of the most important questions that we can ask ourselves, who do I say Jesus is? Who do I say he is? All right. So Peter gets hit with this question. And Peter says, well, you are the Christ, the son of the living, living God. All right. Then he goes on, and then and Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah, for flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The first individual, perhaps, sense of, oh, wow, I actually know who he is. Now, later on, after his death and his resurrection and the church and all of that, every, mo the majority of people in this room, the thing that unites us together is we personally in a relational context, know him. Uh, and so Peter gets this thing from this, this, this response, and then he goes on and says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Now, come back to when he said, and, I will, and upon this rock I will build my church. Right? Now, that word church, often we go, we go, oh, translation, word church, ecclesia, and leave it at that. Right? But that, that word actually was a secular word in the time of Jesus' day. In other words, if you, think, if you think, that, what do I mean by secular? In other words, it was a word that was used not in a religious context. And, what it was a, and it, the, the word was used in the context of the gathering of people together for an expressed purpose. So in Matthew 9, I've come to call. 
as if we're going to assemble something, something here. And I look at it, and I'm, I'm not going to make this statement because I'm not a theologian, all right? But I tend to look at this and go, this is when the church was forming. Uh, we could sort of go Acts chapter, chapter 2 is when the church was, 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 was birthed, but the, it was forming here when Jesus is actually pulling a group of people together and saying, hey, all right? Now, what's interesting, throw out another, just some interesting verses. In, in John chapter 13, verses 34 to 30, 35, another familiar passage of Scripture. Jesus says, um, let, me give you another, let me give you a new command. See, I said it first, another. It was actually a new, which means everything else was, this is it. All right, so let me give you a new command. Really, so let's keep it super simple for everybody. I want you just to love one another, but not just love one another. See, it's not just love, it's love one another as I loved you. All right? Then he goes on and says, and by this love, not by love, but by this love, what love? The same love that Jesus demonstrated that they experienced from him to them would be the love that everybody would use as the benchmark of saying, you are my disciple. You're, you're a disciple of Jesus, aren't you? I see it, you two, you guys talking together. I see you interacting with each other. I see how you're treating each other. I see the graciousness in your, in your words, the kindness in your behavior, all of those sorts of things. You must be a follower of Jesus because that's how Jesus treated the people that were following him. You, you with me? Right? No. Okay, so now he, he, let me just ask a, 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 a question, um, which, I, which I think is, which is interesting, if, maybe before I ask the question. I look at this and I go, Jesus has pulled together a group of people. Come on, we go, we're going to go after something. That we, we're gathering together for a purpose. And then he took a group of people and he was going to mold them in such a way that they would be known for the same love that he exhibited. Now, if that's not a challenge to the church, to us, as we emerge out of this thing called whatever, 2021, and 2021 hasn't finished yet, so someone said to me at the end of 2020, are you glad 2020 is over? I said, oh, no, because 2021's coming. Uh, you know, we're, we're in a tough day. We're in tough times, but Jesus can hold it all together, and Jesus has got, got purpose, in, purpose in it all. Now, as you look at this, this it, what's interesting is, let's go back to Matthew's dinner party. Who was there? So let me give you who was there. Look, firstly, there was, there was Matthew. Let me just pick, sorry, maybe four, four people that we know knew probably were there. There was... It was Matthew, because he, he said he was there because it's his party, and he's writing about it, right? We know he was there. Most likely, there's a guy called Simon was there. Most likely, Mary was there. Um, most likely, the sons of Zebedee were there. Well, the sons of Zebedee turn up um, later on in Matthew and later on in some of the Gospels, and they probably represent the most self-entitled um, privileged of society then. They, they were the sons of, um, of a business owner. Um, in fact, their mum was, or um, well, she was so, I don't know how you describe her mum, their mum, but their mum was probably like that mum you meet at, you know, kids' soccer or something like that. <laughs> that um, no matter what, that. do everything in my power to open every door possible and use my influence that my kid is going to get. Oh, sorry, I've been to, we grew up with kids' soccer. Um, but um, she, so she had, she had the audacity to go to Jesus and said, hey, Jesus, in your day, who's going to sit at your right hand and left hand? My sons? So, so they, they were probably very self-entitled, very privileged. Um, they, they got rebuked by Jesus for arguing over who was going to get status and power. Um, and so they were there at Matthew's dinner party. Um, Mary was there. She got a few demons cast out of her. So most likely Mary had a few problems before the demons left. 
Uh, and most likely, she could probably represent, oh, here comes Mary. Be careful. You just never know what's going to come out of her mouth or whatever. Right? So there would have been something going on in that dynamic. You had um, Simon the Zealot. What does Simon the Zealot mean? Simon the Zealot means he was a part of a, a group of people or considered zealots who were actually fighting Roman occupation. Wow. Right, and then you've got good old Matthew who throws the party, who was a tax collector, which means he was a collaborator with the Roman occupying forces. Wow. So you've got a zealot and you've got a collaborator. You've got Mary. You've got the entitled brothers and whoever else was there and their backgrounds, it wasn't like, the point I'm trying to make is, Jesus did not pull a whole lot of like-minded people together. He didn't pull like-minded. He didn't pull like background. He didn't, he just pulled people together. And sometimes we miss, miss this. You know, we can read through the Old Testament and hear all about the stories of the people in it, but we don't hear about the stories of the people in the New Testament because the New Testament's revealing Jesus to us. So who knows what their stories were? All I'm trying to say is I think that party would have been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been, oh, he asked that question. Oh, I can't believe he thinks that. I can't, be can't believe he would. This dude's been working with the Romans. The, like the clash and the dynamics must have been absolutely amazing when you really start to think about it. But Jesus said to them, he said, a new command I give you. Something that you're going to be known for. As you're going to be known for. The same love that you've experienced in me is going to be the thing that everyone else is going to know that you're one of my, you're going to be one of my, my followers. And then if you read on, and for the sake of time, I don't have time to, to, to get into it. All the different scenarios and dynamics. They would have been there when the expert of the law said, so who's my neighbour? as he's trying to justify himself, trying to diminish his circle of inclusion instead of grow it. He, he, these, these, what we know as the disciples, and it was more than 12, because you've got, you've, got all the, you've got Mary and Martha and everyone else and a few others, but we'll just hear about these 12. So this group of people would have heard so much about what he talked about, and so much of what he talked about was about obviously himself, revealing himself, and when it's all said and done, I believe, dealing with our propensity to turn people into enemies and alienate people. You can imagine the othering that was going on at Matthew's dinner party. I mean, there's like, hey, come on, why, the, why is Matthew here? I know it's his party, but we should, we should be cancelling him. I know Jesus said, follow me, but he's been collaborating with those Romans. I can just imagine what was coming out of Simon's mouth. Yes. Right? So you just think of all that, and then Jesus, the one who can hold it all together, just starts working in the hearts of the people that he's working with, and, and they, come, they come together. And they end up, they end, end up, they, they go through the whole resurrection and crucifixion, they betray him, they, they run from him, yet he still turns up and shows them that, uh, hey, love your neighbours, hey, the, love your enemies, I should say. Um, we find it hard enough to love our neighbours, let alone enemies, but, um, and he showed. The, the people who put him on the cross, he said, forgive them. The people that betrayed him and ran from him, he appeared to them and said, hey, it's all right, I'm not going to enact revenge and so he addressed the whole revenge culture. You know, the problem when you get, want to take revenge and get vengeance, you have to become like the person that you're try, taking something out on to actually take it out on them. So we sell out on ourselves by enacting revenge and, and vengeance. on people. And so he addressed all of these sorts of things and then we have what we, we have as you follow through. You with me, right? So now let me, let's go back to Matthew chapter 9. At Matthew chapter 9, as you keep reading on, you get to the, the end of it. There's been a few miracles along the way. And um, there's a bit where Jesus says to 
he's um, the people that he's with. We call them the disciples, but the people he's with. He says, hey, the harvest is white. Harvest is white. And he's, you know, look, look, look at the harvest, which is a little bit like if I put it like this. All right? We're coming out of, we're emerging out of lockdown. God's people. Jesus' people. We're Jesus' people. We're emerging out of lockdown. He's got these guys and girls that he's pulled together and he says, hey, look, look outside your window. There are loads of people out there that are confused. You know, sometimes you sit there and think, we as believers are confused right now. Can you imagine what it must be like not to have that hope that's an anchor for your soul in in the world in which we live in? And, 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 And I think we can emerge out of this with this fantastic sense of mission, of, of this discovery of, of Jesus in a fresh, dynamic way that we can bring, that we can bring to a world that is, I think, a world that is so lost it's almost found itself. We've just got to show them that Jesus is the answer. All right? So he says, come on, have, have a look at this. Now, as you read on, so from my understanding... There's a, there's a passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 6. I think it's verses 6 to 8. Where Isaiah says, um, Oh, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips. The cherubim touched his, his lips, which is a, a symbolic in our context, perhaps, of, um, hey, I've been, I've been put right. Now, Jesus is the one that puts us right, remember? We don't put ourselves right for Jesus. Jesus puts it, puts it right. We don't have to reconcile ourselves to Jesus. He's the reconciler. We've got to accept what he does so that we can be in right relationship with him. We don't have to do so that we can be in right relationship with him. We've just got to, in faith, believe that he did so that we could be right with him, right? And so Isaiah has this, let's call it, for the sake of what I'm trying to say, this sense of my encounter with God. Uh, and then this is the most amazing thing, right? He says this. He hears this voice. Hears this voice. Who will I send? Who will I send? Who will I send? And um, Isaiah's response is, here I am, send me. In other words, it was this sense of, come on, I'm here, send me. That same thing there is what's taking place with Matthew and the dinner party participants and all of that. Who am I going to send? I'm going to send you here. Now, we know as you read through and over the course of only a very short period of time, the day of Pentecost and all of that and now the empowerment of everybody, but it was this sense of, come on, come on, guys. I use the term guys as an inclusive of everyone. Come on, who am I going to send? Here we are, Lord. Send me into this. You tracking with me? Yeah. Huh? Now, what do I want? Can I can I just do something? I, I, everyone else nodded, and you said, "Of course, you're the one that's in charge." So. Um, <laughs> You know, you, you played a, um, you did a worship song at the start. What was it called? World Outside My Window. That one? Remember that one? Right. That's not a worship song, is it? What's it called? In the old school, fast ones are praise ones, worship ones are slow ones. Uh, I think it's got to do with what the words are telling you to do. But anyway, but there's a world outside your window. Who am I going to send? And um, what's interesting about that song, the guy, I know the guy who wrote it, and I don't know who else played with it, but um, I said to him, I want you to write a song that will get us through, sort of get us through lockdown. And that was that song. To be mindful that there's a world outside our window that needs to know Jesus. There's a world outside our window that needs hope, there's a world outside our window that needs people to step into people's circumstances. There's a world outside our window that just needs people to be understanding, caring, graciousness. 
There's a world outside our window, our little Christian one, that there's people outside your window in this room that, that I believe Jesus is wanting to the same way. Come on, I'm calling you. I'm calling you together. I'm calling us together for purpose. And I don't know if there's ever been a time in modern history where the purpose of Jesus Christ is, is not, more, not more pertinent and more important than probably ever, but of Jesus. Not a religion and all of that, but of Jesus. Jesus. And um, so, we all stand to our feet. So imagine yourself right now, you're there. You've had to work out all of the, call it the family dynamics that probably would have, you would have become really aware of at Matthew's dinner party. I sort of feel like church culture, doesn't matter where you go around the world, it's been a bit like Matthew's dinner party. You know, but Jesus managed to pull them all together into a group of people that said, you will be known. Not by your love for one another, but by the demonstration of the love you've received to others. That's, that's a, there's a big difference. A big difference. And he's calling us. You're, imagine you're Isaiah. And you hear this voice from heaven that says, Who will I send? Who am I going to send? Who am I going to send? Here's my question to you. Would you say, here I am, Lord, send me? Because we're going to emerge out of this, this, um, this COVID season, whatever we're labeling it, into a world that needs Jesus. COVID hasn't said, oh, we don't need Jesus. Didn't even know it needed it, the world we live in. But come on, we know we've got something that's very powerful. That, um, that I believe if we let him, he can mold us together and do something fantastic. Yeah? So just that thought. Where'd the rest of the worship team? Because I was going to ask, can we sing There's a World Outside Your Window? Yeah. And then I'll leave Matt, not Matt, I'll leave Sam work out what, what do I do next. <laughs> but I want you to, I, I seriously ask you, and I, I, I couldn't believe it when um, we did that for the first song. And... Um, when you sing it, have, have a look at the, just look at the words. And um, so it's one of those songs you sing with your eyes open, right? And, um, and just those words and just, come on, just come on. I, I really believe that um, God's going to do something here if you let him. I really do. And um, so if you were to say you're there, if you're responsible, well, here I am, Lord, send me. Now, who knows what send means? It's availability that's the most important thing. And we live in a world where I want to know the consequences of my availability first. That's not how God happens. That's not how he works. He, he looks for an up for it spirit and then goes, all right, come on, here we go. So if that's you, I want you to, um, can I ask you just maybe just lift your hands and just reach out to God and say, come on. God, here I am, Lord. Send me. Use me. Use us, Lord. Father, we just stand before you right now. And Lord, we get our eyes on the, on the mission and the purpose. There's a world that desperately needs to know you. There's people outside the window of our own lives, whether it be even inside the church, outside the church, that desperately need you. And Father, we ask you, we just ask you to use us in Jesus' name. Amen. So come on, Aiden. Amen. Amen. Come on, why don't we give God some praise this morning? Amen. Amen. That's good news. Pastor Gary, thank you. That was such, um, really feel like, obviously, 
that was such a significant word for LA and for our campus and for our community and our church. And I'm wearing that challenge and I'm taking that on. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, there, the good news for you is that Christians are not just a select group of perfect people who have it all figured out, but we're much like the people sitting at that dinner party from every place and background and upbringing and trauma and whatever you have walked through, God is looking at you today and wants a relationship with you. It means forgiveness from your sins. It means a brand new start. It means a slate wiped clean. It means today is a brand new day that you have a reason to walk with hope, a reason to walk with your head held high and to carry this message of love and of good news to the world that needs it so bad. So if you're here today, just for a moment, every head bowed, every eye closed, and you're here and you don't know Jesus, you, you don't have a personal relationship with him, you've not asked him to be Lord and Savior of your life, I'd love to just lead you in a prayer. It's a prayer that says, God, I need help. I can't figure this out on my own. I can't do this on my own. I need your power, your love, and your help in my life. And that's, if that's you today, would you just shoot up your hand straight in the air? Just saying, today's a brand new day. I can't walk this out alone. Hands all over the place. You're not alone. Anybody else? I need Jesus this morning. Incredible. You can put your hands down. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer. The Bible says that we are all sinners, that we all fall short of the glory of God. But the good news is that Jesus changes that. And if you declare with your mouth, and believe in your heart, then Jesus, you would be saved. So I want you to repeat this after me if you just raise your hand. Say, Jesus. I need you. Make me brand new. Forgive me of my past. Help me live for you. All the days of my life. Thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate, people. Come on, if we have a reason to celebrate, it's that right there. Awesome. Hey, just, just before you go, we're going to close in just a minute. Just a minute. Just before you go, if you prayed that prayer, raise your hand today. We just have a Bible we'd love to give you to mark and celebrate today. It is just the, the beginning of a brand new journey. So they're going to be team in the back holding this up. And if you prayed that prayer, grab one of these on your way out. No strings attached. But secondly, if you have questions about faith or about this journey or about walking this thing out, if we can help in any way, we would love to do that. We're just going to ask that you text Welcome Home LA to 97000. It'll just shoot you back a text link um, where we can help you or pray with you or walk with you any step of the journey, however we can. Sound good? Awesome. Hey, before you go today, can I just put a challenge out there? If you're brand new to church, you've been coming to Hillsong LA for any amount of time, don't meet, don't leave without meeting someone today. Whether it's someone that you're sitting with, some of our team on the doors on the back, maybe grab lunch. The arts district is just a, a hop, skip, and a jump away from here. But this is so much of following Jesus, is living this thing out with people and with community. Amen? Can I pray for you? Father, we thank you so much. Lord, that you don't just, are, you're not confined to an event or a service, but God, today, as we walk out these doors, Lord, your presence, your Holy Spirit promises to go with us and before us. So God, I pray you'd bless your people. Lord, as we live out this week in homes, communities, workplaces, God, we would have eyes to see what you are doing in the earth. Lord, that there is a world that is desperate for the love of Jesus, and we would be able to carry that wherever we go today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. 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 We love you. We will see you soon.